<laughs> so a multidisciplinary approach is uh, has to be up, uh, done in classes one to eight. Multidisciplinary means we don't have to give a project uh, which is uh, separate for each subject. We have to find a topic uh, which is common for all, right? So we, if you are giving an English project, a math project, a science project, it has to be multidisciplinary. That means interrelated. So we don't give five projects in each subject as uh, class nine and 10, it is subject specific where each uh, subject teacher is supposed to give one project. So in one to eight, uh, we have a multidisciplinary project. And then we have in classes one to 12, that is called the art integrated learning. The most of the educators whom I've interacted is basically getting confused between art integration and art integrated learning. So first, let me spend a minute or two to make you understand the difference between AIL and art integration project. So art integration project is something which the student has to do because of what you have taught them in the class, right? So it is, you are giving an homework or an assignment or a research work to do something about different forms of art. And uh, you know that uh, every state is paired with another state. And based on that, you have to give them a project. So that project is done by the students, right? So that's art integrated project. But when it comes to art integrated learning, that's applicable for one to 12 where the onus is not on the student, but on the teacher to deliver a class based on one of the art forms. So it could be in the form of a, a skit, a role play, you know, a, a, a PPT or whatever forms of art that you know, dancing, singing, uh, or a mime. <clears throat> so, so many forms of art can be introduced into the learning. So AIL is how you teach the students. It's not something which is done by the student. It is how the teacher is presenting that class. So art integrated learning is from one to 12. So every teacher is supposed to maintain a record of whatever unique methods you have taken to, uh, you have chosen to teach your students. maybe once a week, maybe once a fortnight, that is uh, not mandatory given by CBSE, but you need to integrate some form of art in your uh, lessons, right? So that's the basic difference between art integration project and art integration learning. So we go uh, <clears throat> to the next part, that is the methodology. So as far as possible, now we are, uh, you know, you are uh, reading so much about STEM and STEAM and so on. We are going to uh, like STEM means science, technology, engineering, math. STEAM means science, technology, engineering, and then you're including arts and maths. So there are lots and lots of methods by which we need to integrate. So otherwise, you know, the first question that uh, the student asks when you go to the class is that, why, what is the use of all this? Why am I studying all this, right? So we need to ex explain to the students now that this is the uh, method that we are following and this is how you're going to use in real life. Because today's students are not yesterday's students. Yesterday, when we were students, we the teachers used to say that this is the uh, this is what is given. You accept it. Uh, now uh, the children are going no longer going to get that as an answer. We need to find real life example and application, which I'm going to show you in plenty of how these lessons can be applied in lives. So we need to integrate the content with a different art form. That's as far as possible. So it's a journey, right? The arts is a journey. So I don't think that it is a mandate from CBC. That's why we have to do. So it promotes challenge in the students. I'm sure you, all the teachers have so many experience with kids who have come out so well during this art integration project that you gave because many of them were good in art. They did some beautiful projects. Many of them who were silently uh, listening to your classes probably during the offline mode uh, during the online mode, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're a completely different person. Uh, they are coming out with so many innovations and so many innovative projects uh, that you yourself are surprised. Some amazing things have been submitted in the past year, uh, we have observed. So somebody may be good in painting, art and craft, clay modeling. So many other forms are there which can be uh, used. Because the problem with Indian education uh, till now was that we are using homogeneous methods for a heterogeneous uh, group. You have 40, 50 students in your class. All of them have different uh, type of uh, uh, intelligence. And uh, so far, we did not recognize multiple intelligence as such. I'm not blaming the educators because our system was such. We have to complete the syllabus and pressure was there. And now what is happening as per the new NEP 2020, 
identify people as per their uh, multiple intelligence. So somebody could be a visual learner, somebody could be an auditory learner or a kinesthetic learner. So different types of learners. So the advantage of art integrated learning is that each child as per his or her capacity can learn that subject. So learning by doing, which is the foundational or the early age NEP, which is going to learning by doing, not, okay, this is so, it is written in the book, you mug up that. So we are moving from a technique of uh, memorization and rote learning to experiential learning or learning by doing. So it will definitely promote experiential learning. Art integration will definitely promote that. So when we're talking about maths, we do a lot of identities. We are proving them uh, through cutting pasting method, right? So they exactly know why this identity is like this or why this formula is coming like this. And the child can be given the freedom of using any art form. If you're going to be very strict on what is the expectation that, you know, everybody gives the uniform stuff, then I think we are not also solving the purpose. So give them that. So the basic objective of AIL is that every child should grow as far as the knowledge is concerned. So not by learning up a definition or learning up dates as uh, traditionally it was happening. So, but the learning is happening from observation, experimentation and building scientific temper. That's important. If you know that 20, 25 years back, when many of you were small, you would, you would hear the Americans say, you know, study hard, otherwise the Indians are going to take away all your jobs. Because we were very good in maths and sciences, right? We were very good in maths and sciences. And people across Europe and US used to dread the fact that Indians are so good. Most of the Indian students who went abroad topped in the universities, in the American universities, the Americans and the Chinese. So, uh, but what has happened recently is that our students are not as good as what we were used to be in 15, 20 years. If you look at the PISA or the exams or the world ratings, we are definitely coming down. Why is that happening? Because somewhere down the line, our education system, which was good probably 35 years back, didn't manage to change itself at regular intervals. We were teaching the same stuff over and over again. I remember uh, till last year, not still as a, in some of the books, I still see, you know, there are questions like this. A TV and VCR was sold for 1,000 rupees. And many students come and ask me, sir, what is this VCR? Now, these are all outdated things. VCR is video cassette. Some of the younger teachers present here may not know it. So VCR, you are including in a word problem. And, you know, they are selling it for 1,000 rupees. God knows when that book was made. So we need to change with the times. The terminology has to be something which the child likes. So we have questions in statistics or, uh, you know, the social sciences. It has to be the local flavor and the local content. So that's why the uh, uh, CBSE is also giving a lot of emphasis on the uh, local content. So when the textbooks are made, you will find that, let's say you are in Karnataka, you will find a lot of history about Karnataka coming, which is the need of the art, because you should know about your state. And this pairing of state has made it so beautiful. Like I am from Delhi. So my students did projects from Sikkim. And they learned so much about Sikhing culture, which otherwise they would have never bothered that, okay, this is what the, the dress that they wear, the handicrafts, uh, or this is the flora and fauna found there. This is the temperature conditions there. So that's something beautiful. And as CBC says, Ek Bharat Shresh Bharat, it's something very beautiful to promote unity in uh, so much of diversity in India. So this is the best way that our, uh, we can promote, right? So uh, I will be taking, I'm not going through the chat because I'm just going through this. So at the end, we can take up questions. Okay. So if you are trying to ask some questions uh, in the chat, I'm sorry, I'm not taking it up. So because uh, <laughs> I will not be able to cover up whatever I want. So we will take up that. So this is what the uh, aim and objective of AIL is, right? Yeah. So we move uh, ahead uh, to the next part that is uh, the mandatory uh, edu art education that is specified by CBSC. Now, if you see the notification that was released, uh, it says that art education is mandatory. It's not advisable. It's not an advisory. It's mandatory for classes 1 to 10, and every school is going to reserve some periods for this for art education. Okay. So, till the end of last year, there were I used to get queries. Sir, is it compulsory? Do we have to do? There are many schools, you will be surprised, still not integrating art into the learning. That is with, that is the disappointing part of the implementation. So the policy is on one hand, the implementation comes into the second part. So as educators, the onus is on us, not the government, not the principal, the onus is on us. We are the working at the grassroots level. 
right? So it is my duty, it is your duty to propagate this, not because the principal is saying, not because the government is saying. It is important that we uh, mold ourselves to the new format. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that uh, we get lost in the whole NEP and we'll not be uh, called as a, a progressive teacher. So we will be stuck in that old time warp where we are, you know, referring to those old notes which you have been uh, referring to the past 10 years, 20 years and 30 years. So suddenly you must have found that your number of years of experience is invalid now because suddenly you shifted to the online mode, right? And when we shifted to the online mode, mode we had to learn new tools. So your 25 years or 30 years of experience became totally nil because you are teaching them in a different format altogether. So that's what happens when we don't adapt ourselves. And I'm happy to say our educators did a fantastic job last year. Uh, many of us, including me, didn't even know how to prepare a simple PPT or a, you know uh, an Excel sheet or how to take classes on Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And from there, we have evolved to very advanced forms of you know uh, incorporating uh, tools like Fli Flipgrid and Nearpod and you name it. There are hundreds of uh, apps and uh, techniques to make your classes interesting, right? So, so many forms have been discovered by educators and it is uh, very good that if you use these forms, the technical forms or the traditional forms, your art, your painting, your culture, the mimes, uh, music, painting, all this can be used. So, uh, what is the need for this? So, the government felt that there is a desperate need, CBC felt there is a, a desperate need because it's important that we connect our life inside school and outside school. That is very, very important. Connecting uh, uh, to the inside and outside. Uh, do you know of engineers who will call an electrician to fix the bulb in your uh, house? Uh, if something goes wrong in the house. He is a qualified engineer, but he doesn't know how to fix a simple fuse. He will call the electrician. There are small minor problems with water leakages. You will call the plumber. Our education system was not designed to cater to self-sufficiency. Right? There was no vocational training. There was no technical skill training. And as a result of all this, what was happening was uh, our uh, education system, which was based on rote learning and memorization, produced engineers. We produced a lot of people with a lot of degrees, but skills were minimal. So when the skills are minimal, then what happens is that when real life situation comes, you have to depend on someone else. And that's the, that's a real tragedy. And that is why the I'm glad that the NEP 2020 is, uh, uh, yeah, so the NEP uh, uh, specifies that um, uh, we need to make uh, children learn life skills. And you must be, if you've gone through the document, I'm happy that uh, you uh, will read about experiential learning and you will also be skill-based learning, where skills are taught to the kids. You must have heard of the bagless days. In the bagless days, what are you going to do? You're going to call people who are experts in a field, right? You are, uh, you, uh, you are a biology teacher or a social science teacher or a maths teacher. And how do you prepare for a bagless days? You can call an engineer and uh, or a plumber or a carpenter or a farmer now, who can explain uh, how to sow a seed, how, how it grows into a plant, uh, what type of manure is uh, added, what, what, are the, what is the care that has to be taken? What are the different types of plants? Because a farmer is actually on the field doing these things. He will be able to tell you the best thing. So when that person is coming to your classroom and explaining it, rather than you theoretically explaining which you have actually not experienced, it will make a hell lot of difference. And that is what is experiential learning all about. So the child learns from this person and goes to the school garden, starts planting trees. He looks at the seed. He can identify which is the good quality seed, how to water if the water is more, it dies. If the water is less, it dies. Or sunlight. So many factors uh, are learned. How many times do we take our students outside the classroom to learn everything that can be learned from nature? We always stick. We are confined to the four walls. We, we are always into theory. And that's the difference between actually the CBC schools and the IB schools, where there is more practicals. Everything uh, in the Western countries are done practically, right? So we are stuck in that old time walk, but that things are changing. And uh, I think as you, if you're a teacher uh, in this generation, I think you are lucky because you get to experience a lot of things which uh, nobody has ever experienced in the past so many years. So being a teacher in this is very, very exciting. And I'm sure that as educators, uh, you will be able to um, understand and apply all that is being said. And I'm sure you also have a lot of ideas regarding this.
So this is a pairing of state. You are already aware of the pairing that is, uh, you know, Jammu Kashmir and uh, Tamil Nadu. So whichever state, I'm sure you are joining from all across India. So it's it's a different pairing has already been given. So uh, when we are talking about uh, pairing of states, you cannot choose your pair. The CBSE is already set. Okay, like for example, Delhi is paired with Sikkim. So this document you will al already find there. And uh, so every state is paired with another state. And the advantage of this is that uh, we need to uh, understand uh, the, the rich culture of our country. And by understanding about another state, I think we are doing a great job in national integration. So this is already, this uh, already circular is available and you're already aware of this perhaps. So learning by doing experiential learning is going to make our learning very, very meaningful. And when I say learning by doing, that is, I'm going to show you some examples of how that happens. Yeah. So now when we talk about this, the hows, how do we do it? So we need to first take up some topics that we are comfortable. See, first thing is that whenever we present a content, we ourselves need to be masters of that. Remember, our children of today are much well-read than children of yesterday. They read a lot because the earlier what used to happen, the teacher was the supreme power or the supreme person who gives all knowledge to the child. The teacher was on a pedestal, like the Guru Kul system. No? The Guru was the ultimate person. Now the teacher is changed from that Guru to just a facilitator who helps in the child to learn because all the material is available freely. There are so many reference books, there are uh, various websites, there are so many apps that have come out and uh, everything can be found. So it's anytime, anywhere learning. So what is your role as a teacher to facilitate? To facilitate, first of all, you need to understand what, your, what the topic is. So tomorrow, if a child challenges you in class, uh, you cannot simply say that, okay, sit down, I will, uh, I don't know about it. Okay, you can say that, let's work this on together. I'm hearing this for the first time. Let's see that. And together we can explore this. So we need to facilitate that. So we cannot be defensive. At the same time, we cannot call ourselves experts because nobody can do that because there is so much always to learn, right? So we need to analyze. We need to identify what are the things that we need to do? What are the activities that we can do? And be flexible with the students. Okay, sometimes what happens is that flexibility is lost. In many uh, situations, the teacher is very strict that it has to be done in this. I want an eight page, page project. So suppose it is six page or seven page or nine pages, the child is penalized. So why only eight page? If the child is more creative, give that. And it's the quality which matters. So probably somebody has done a beautiful project in five pages, no problem. So be a little bit flexible, okay? And sometimes what happens, submit on 10th of August, that's your last date. After that, marks will be cut. So we need to be a little flexible in our whole system because, you know, every child is unique. Uh, we have different types of learners. Somebody will be very fast. Somebody will be slow. But at the same time, everybody will do at a certain, uh, you know, they will do it if they are constantly encouraged. So you need to just explain what has, what is the expectation, okay? And you need to make them understand what has to be done. If there is any doubt, you have to facilitate that and allow the students to make mistakes. There is no problem. Uh, that's the main issue. Students today don't know how to face failures. So you are a topper throughout your school and suddenly in college, there are a lot of people better than you. And suddenly you uh, you have a nervous breakdown. Why? Because we, are, we as educators and parents are not probably training them to fail. It's okay to fail. You will... Uh, why do we always say that when there is a game, for example, when the child loses it, the child is upset. So we need to understand that participation is important. Winning is important, but not at the cost of your emotional well-being. So that's that's a very important aspect that goes into your personality and character. Uh, so we have to make them understand this, that uh, it's okay that if you don't succeed, there is always a next chance. So uh, uh, the greatest of people are not, uh, you know, school or college toppers. Right. So there were a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of people who made mistakes and then went on to do things in life. So there are people who left college and uh, went on to do their businesses. OK, so why is that? Because the uh, if you especially the American society, it gives a lot of uh, chance to uh, people who are entrepreneurs. So if you look at uh, the big giants, uh, if you name it, Google or Facebook, uh, they're all American companies. Why? Because they think large and all of them start learning all this coding and artificial intelligence and they think big right at the time when they're in school. 
today when we when i go to a class let's say i'm taking class 9 and then i ask them what do you want to do 50% will have no answer and 50% will say i want to become a doctor or engineer they are not exploring enough the same option which the parents said or there is a doctor in the family or you know that's a traditional way of getting income they are all going in that traditional way they are not exploring what are they good at right so that's a big problem and that we need to identify that and uh, we need to uh, uh, explore the child's potential and give more and more chance to these children so uh, whenever i have a session i take this example he is my student ankan mutra mitra and i am very proud that i am his teacher he is one of the uh, best examples of someone who has learned something from school and went on to do something amazing things in life so uh, you see that he has made a structure like this uh, he is you can uh, google him he is one of the famous architects in india by the name of ankan mitra a n k o n m i t r a full credits to him so whatever we teach in mathematics like congruency uh, symmetry uh, or similarity or uh, uh, 3d shapes all that he says that i have applied into my architecture so he's not he called him he is a combined origami and architecture and uh, that's what he does and the kind of structures that he builds the kind of buildings that he does is uh, amazing i mean nobody does things like him you see they are all symmetrical figures and they are all done by paper folding so initially he started with paper now he is doing with metals and he has a very uh, he has made a, a business uh, i mean big business houses have got their buildings designed by him in france mexico chile a lot of uh, international countries and european countries so he does a lot of projects in mexico and many other countries right so uh, this is a best example so if we have something like this i mean this is the best example so some kids will come and ask me sir what is the use of all studying all this maths and congruency and similarity and symmetry i show him see what ankan is doing this is the best example of <laughs> what is uh, what you can do right so uh, continuing further so this is ankan mitra so he had an origami workshop Uh, where uh, uh, architects architects and origamis from across the world created so this is the design on the left that you see is done by him and the design that you see on the right uh, he was a part of it along with the chinese uh, who is a master at this so uh, when you consider the world origamis uh, there are very few like this so uh, this is examples of what he has done so i am sure that you can follow him uh, for more things that he does he does very very simple things like even durga puja he will make a hat <laughs> with origami also and diwali with beat any festival he will uh, bring out some creativity and he does workshops for uh, kids and he does workshops for college students he does workshops for educators uh, uh, me and ankan had done a workshop for maths educators which was attended by more than 1000 people last year so uh, this is what uh, is what real life application is all about uh so uh, going further uh, i will be showing more examples uh this is of course uh, the uh, you know the uh, this is a role play that is being enacted uh, and uh, the children can enact and uh, uh, maybe it could be a story from your english book it could be a story it could be an incident which happened in history so you can enact out uh, this could be in the online or offline both this is of course a situation in uh, uh, this is a, a role play that was held in uh, uh, pratibha vidyalaya in chanakyapuri in new delhi so the students are uh, involved in this activity where they are uh, uh, telling probably a story or uh, uh, they are probably you know uh, discussing something uh, so it could be a puppet show it could be something so we need to explore all these options because you know kids are very tired of the traditional way of teaching <clears throat> so uh, what are the resources always make sure that when you give an assignment or something Uh, always because you know we are also following the sdg goals the united nations sdg goals all of you must read if you haven't read uh, as uh, uh, it's important that uh, the sustainable development goals we use environmental friendly uh, objects 
the world is for our kids now if we dirty that place our kids will not be able to breathe as it is you know you see the situation is so bad because uh, you know uh, 10 years down uh, 20 years uh, before nobody took care of the environment now we have to breathe poisonous air in delhi it's one of the most polluted city in the world now you see the number of infections increasing so while planning it's important that the resources is economical take local stuff i'll be also showing you many more examples take look don't uh, give them okay buy this from this market you know something may be costing 200 rupees 300 rupees no let's focus on things which are available free of cost available at your house it could be a hairpin it could be a rubber band uh, it could be a pay, uh, you know the uh, recycled paper it can be anything it would be a old jute bag so think of stuff which they can use and locally available not exquisite things which they have to buy from the market or you know those things and uh, so it's important that we plan about the sdgs which is very very important and uh, probably uh, i think every educator should read especially sdg 4 which says about quality education right and uh, also then we go to see this is example this is i think from kerala this is an example this is uh, you might have those who are from the south they have already identified this is actually the uh, leaves of the you know the coconut right the coconut leaves so the coconut leaves are folded into it and they have made a spinner sort of thing so this is because of the available locally available now you can't uh, give this to a project uh, in a place where there is no coconut right so you can think of other things uh, if you are in the coastal areas they can take shells uh, you can take bindis or bangles clips uh, you can take up shells of uh, stuff lids bottle caps carton boxes so many things can be used old socks dupattas these are all examples of uh, you know stuff that can be used to make an art integration project uh, locally whatever is available that should be made use of uh, this of course uh, this is uh, you know the olden times the children used to sit on the ground and learn there are many schools which go in the traditional way they make the children sit on the mat and the primary years first second third they sit down and learn okay so that's the old gurukul system and uh, uh, whenever they learn with mud you know otherwise nowadays parents oh don't play in the mud your hand will get dirty this thing in that thing and all that the immune system goes for a toss because you have prevented the child from doing all this but uh, uh, as kids we have played in the mud we have done all sort of things we played and we uh, fell down and so there's nothing to worry about right so when we are over protective when we are not exposing our children to actual nature they will never learn the learning happens uh, outside right so uh, it's yeah absolutely as it enhances the fine motor skills enhances cooperation it enhances so many other thing you just have to monitor the activities so you see there are a lot of figures being drawn there uh, mathematical figures so they can experiment out with figures so it's uh, how interesting it is to draw with their hand on the sand or uh, you know a stick on the sand rather than a pencil and notebook so they can rub it out they can experiment if this is more fun uh this is another example from a school in andhra pradesh uh, the you see they are doing something with clay and what i liked about this picture is the fact that the teacher is actually sitting down with the student and doing it it's not that you do so you are also a participant that's important so when uh, children feel that you are also a part they feel happy about it so as i told you we no longer should keep that distance our rapport with our students is so important that our distance between the student we need to be uh strict but we need uh, but that doesn't mean that our rapport with the students uh, should go we we can be strict we need to maintain discipline but at the same time we can be very friendly with the students we should be available to our students so when we sit down with the students and do an activity which you have assigned i think that's the best example when children will also do otherwise what will happen some of them will do some of them will not do and this beautiful picture that has been clipped randomly i suppose because you nobody if you look the children are not looking at the camera and they are doing their own work and many are happy and you know they are involved in their work uh, as if it's not a forced identity right it's not a forced activity so this is another example of uh, art integration this is uh, in many of the government schools you will find and many of the schools i have seen that they allow the a uh, school walls to be painted a lot of creative work is uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, paintings and lot of stuff which they are creative they all uh, you know they uh, try out various activities uh, even uh, in the online actually what happens is that you should create whatsapp groups or i don't know a notice board sort of thing where the uh, you can display the students work 
uh, whenever students are submitting you excellent work, uh, you say very good in private, that's fine. Okay. But when you display it, what happens? That child will also be happy. Plus, there will be more students who are inspired to do more, uh, better than that. So then they will, another boy will send or another girl will send, says, this is what I have done. Can you also share this in the group? So they feel happy about the fact that you are sharing all this in the group. So it's it, it definitely promotes a lot of learning uh, because in the NEP, they are talking about a 360 degree report card. Okay, which is a holistic approach of generating a report card. Earlier, what used to happen, report card means the, chil the child is uh, doing something, there is some marks involved, and then what is happening, you are uh, giving the marks for it, that's it. Now, when you talk about a 360 degree assessment, what happens is that the assessment is from you, the assessment is from the, uh, the peer uh, group, okay? So you make them into groups, and you say that this is the project that has to be done, you will find that that person is very good, but there may be a peer report, sir, he didn't cooperate. Uh, he did everything on his own. He said that you don't do, I will do. Or there could be one person who didn't do anything. Uh, so the peer rating is totally different from your rating. So what you think uh, is, uh, who is a very good uh, student, uh, his peer uh, feedback will be something different. So when we uh, make a 360 degree report card, if you read about that in the document, it's a beautiful thing because you are getting uh, responses from not only the teacher, but also the companions. Okay, and there is a self-assessment. How, what do you feel about your project? Self-assessment. Just like we write our reports, no, in corporates they do that. What do you think? How, how did you perform as a teacher? Good, bad, average, excellent. How was your relationship with the parents? How was your relationship with the principal? Uh, how did you take your classes? You do a self-assessment. Then it goes to your superior, maybe the head of the department or your coordinator is uh, what do you think about this person? And then it goes to the principal. What do you think? So different, uh, we didn't do that for the students. So we are going to do that first time for the students. And that's going to be very, very interesting. So I can, uh, I'm just checking the chats also in between. I am seeing that Dr. C.B. Patil is giving a lot of uh, suggestions and also Kumund Mehta. Uh, so thanks for all, uh, for keeping this alive and uh, participation. So that's, it's also nice that you put in your comments so for the benefit of the 300 people who are there. So I'm, uh, I think there is a, uh, a lot of uh, uh, participation and uh, the suggestions that you are giving in the chat is also being read by a lot of people. So thank you for participating. Yes, uh, enhances imagination, power, uh, power of the child and so on. Great. So uh, this is an, another example from another school doing a role a puppet show. Through the puppetry, what is happening is that uh, this is a school in Bhopal, which is giving this uh, puppet show. And uh, through the puppet show, they are trying to communicate anything. It could be values, it could be you know uh, an EVS class, it could be a science concept, anything through the puppets. So what happens, it's a different mode of uh, teaching. And uh, what happens is that uh, uh, you will be able to understand this better. Uh, Proceeding further, this is all examples. So I wanted to keep uh, the session more to the practical side because that's what I feel is that most sessions, uh, a lot of people talk, but then uh, when it comes to actual doing, there is nothing. So uh, that is what we talk about uh, mainly. I, I, we have a group which is called the SDG4 in action. Uh, so if you're not members of this, you are most welcome to join the All India Educators Forum. We are on Facebook and other media. So where we uh, implement all this, not talk, but we actually do it. And there are a lot of educators who share a lot of work. So the work that I'm showing you is a collection of all the work done by teachers across India. So this is all examples here. Right. So uh, when we do all these activities, the most important thing is the follow-up. The planning is one part. The implementation is that. The third part is the follow-up. Now, when we don't follow up, there are certain kids, you know, just like every, <laughs> even educators also, they require reminders and follow-ups. So we need to have a follow-up. We need to have feedback. We need to have brainstorming activities. We need to have uh, Q&A. We need to have presentations. And then all this can, uh, you know, ultimately have in the form of an assessment. So you could give two marks or three marks based on different parameters which are very transparent. So TBC doesn't say that, you know, the, the child who submits on time should be given three and the child who doesn't get to submit on time gives two. These are parameters set by you as an educator or by the school which you work for. So uh, uh, whatever you are designing, the parameters, the rubrics of the assessment needs to be very transparent. 
nobody should accuse you as an educator that sir why have you given more marks to this and less marks to this okay your it should be there that this is the this is one mark for the content this is one mark for the presentation this is one mark for the research work that went in, into it uh, for originality and so on so you can decide on all those parameters and say okay okay this is what was there or you copied this stuff from here and that is why for the originality i will not be able to give you marks so this is where uh, you have to be very clear on how you are going to grade the students and of course every theme that has to be there has to be integrated uh, otherwise uh, it will be meaningless so uh, uh, for example the suggested format this is just a suggestion that uh, you need to identify the class and uh, the concept and the topic that you are going to give as a project what is the theme and what is the outcome for that that will be there and which is the art form that you are identifying and being used so a child is using role play or mimicry or mono acting or painting or clay modeling or whatever it is that art form needs to be used whether it's a visual art or a performing art or it's a mixture of both that depends on the student and you and ultimately you need to give them a real time frame of when are they supposed to submit it when are they supposed to submit it is all dependent on you know you can't say that okay i am giving this now by monday i want it today is already sunday i have give them some time uh, because uh, creative things need time so if you think that you want things to be done very very fast uh, let allow the children to get some time the uh, deadlines can be planned in such a way that uh, uh, that the child gets uh, enough time for that so here uh, we go further uh, these are all things so these are again examples show them real life examples in of life there are lots of 2d shapes 3d shapes uh, the basic under, make them understand what is the difference between 2d and 3d by actually showing them things outside take them to a field and explain to them you know the why is the sky or uh, color of the sky blue uh, or a rainbow or uh, the sunrise sunset the different position of the sun at different time shadow formation uh, you know the winds Uh, pressure temperature all these concepts which are there in science momentum force friction uh, you name it and everything can be taught especially maths and science and most of the poets you know they used to write all their poems under a tree uh, nature is our best teacher and what is happening is that we take away kids from the nature sit down inside and uh, you know the learning is confined to that four walls and the mind also is closed so we need to do more exploration and uh, 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 yeah so we need to integrate all this into uh, there was a, in the chat i somehow read this one question good afternoon is good it sounds good it may help out you within 40 how will integrate all these including completion of syllabus so uh, what i said is that don't integrate all your lessons with this i am saying that use it for an introduction so when you introduce let's say you have 10 chapters in the syllabus you need to introduce this at 10 times in a year i think that's possible every class it's very difficult i mean that kind of time and energy and imagination we are yet to receive because we have going from a traditional system to a new system so i'm not talking about integrate art in every class that you take 30 out of 30 in a month no maybe once a fortnight or once in 3 weeks uh, when this is class is done then it makes meaningful especially introducing a topic that's the most important once the topic is introduced then everything that is there in that chapter it's not possible probably to do it because of lack of time so uh, uh, so these are all only advisable at the introductory stage or it is advisable when there is a difficult concept uh, when there is a difficult concept like uh, many students will uh, as math teachers you will say why should we learn this or what how do we derive this formula so derivation of formulas and all are uh, can be done experientially that is very important and unless we connect our topic to the real world believe me uh, we are losing out completion of syllabus is a very secondary activity and it's uh, uh, the secondary activity why because unless we relate it to real life we are just producing robots and believe me robots have no place in the uh, in the 21st century in the 22nd century uh, next century <coughs> why because people want skills today i have students in uh, whom i know who are already working for facebook and google uh, getting salaries of 1 lakh plus and why is this because they have developed their skills they know stuff T- tomorrow when you go they will not ask you whether you got a 80% or 90% or 95% if you are extremely brilliant good you will get into medical and iit that's good for those students but at the same time is that uh, it is important that uh, 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 we teach our students 
uh, uh, to apply what they are learning in real life. If that application and connection is not there, children will lose interest. So this is the paradox of the current system, which we have to gradually move. Not that all classes should be integrated with that, and then you don't finish the syllabus. Syllabus is important. I am also a teacher. I have been teaching in a school for 25 years. I know the pressure of the syllabus, but at the same time, we are in a, a not in a position to integrate all this immediately. So gradually it can be done. And uh, that is why the CBSE says that we are going to reduce 30% of the syllabus. So in the new NEP that is being prepared, when NCRT syllabus will be out, you will understand that the syllabus is not that much now. When you are removing 30% of the syllabus, you will get ample time and opportunity to use your creativity and your experience in empowering your students to learn and connect more to real life rather than the rote learning and memorization, right? So uh, uh, you should have lots of games. Uh, you know, children are gaming addicts. Anything that is, involves levels, they are interested. So that could be simple games like log games. You know, those locks are available with a particular number. Only the lock opens, right? So you can set the lock uh, on a, this. Of course, we can't do it in online. But in offline, this is a good game that children used to enjoy. You can think of uh, problems which are solutions. And uh, the, after solving, they have to put that number. Then only the lock opens. So whoever is able to open the lock he is the winner. So create some games like this. You know, the traditional games were there like Sudoku and word games and, uh, you know, the puzzles. So there are lots of things. Antakshari's can be done. Uh, you know, Antakshari, like uh, I'm not talking about the songs. Uh, once I was uh, uh, giving a session in one of the schools and they asked me, sir, I am an accounts teacher. I am a business studies teacher. I am a physics teacher. Well, how will I play this Antakshari? So Antakshari is basically what you need to, let's say you are a physics teacher. <laughs> right. And then you have to think of words which are related to physics and the ending words, they have to say another word with that. So it can be applied to not only English or Hindi, it can be applied across science, maths, whatever. So that is that. And then if you want, that's also called an Atlas game, you know, like countries. So if you say India ending uh, letter is A, then you say Australia, then A, then another uh, country, it goes on and on. Same way we can have an Antakshari of our subject, uh, which, whichever class. So uh, vocab vocabulary increases certain new terminology comes. Uh, so all this is learned by the students at that point of time, right? So uh, you can design your crosswords. And of course, there are now a lot of online uh, tools available to generate crosswords if you are not able to make on your own. Ideally, you should make on your own, but if you don't have the time and the <clears throat> know how to generate crosswords uh, for every class of yours, this can be done uh, online also. The crossword generators are available and you will be able to easily do this. So uh, this is these are all examples I'm showing. So you could bring real life objects to the class, show them things. So, uh, you know, taking a simple cycle to the class, uh, it's uh, the children are curious enough, but you can teach so many concepts of circles. Like you see the spokes of the circle, that is the radius, the center can be, what is the diameter, circumference, area, uh, uh, the concept of congruency, you see different mathematical shapes. So I'm just taking an example of a cycle, but it can be any object. So when uh, earlier, you know, when we used to be at, they, we, they, we had a lot of teaching aids. <clears throat> but when we actually take a class, what happens is that the teaching aids is gradually uh, getting less. And we are, uh, we are uh, trying to do everything by lecture method, which becomes very boring. So uh, as you progress as a teacher, we should progress with ideas and not that, you know, when we are fresh from beard, we have a lot of ideas, we bring in charts, we show them stuff, but as we grow old, leave it, you know, that way. anyway, the children are not interested, why should I do it? But I think, as I said, at least at the beginning stage to understand the concepts, it's important that we do it. And uh, if you want to integrate other subjects, uh, that's the best way because we need to uh, integrate in such way. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, you talk, uh, uh, somebody asked me, give an example of uh, how do we uh, integrate uh, a subject or a topic in multidisciplinary nature. Uh, let's say we are talking about class four or five. I'm sure there are a lot of primary teachers here also. So let's take up a small, simple topic. Let's say climate. Okay. Now climate, I, uh, ideally, uh, if I have to integrate all the subjects, when I talk about science, that concept of temperature, humidity, uh, you know, rainfall, why does rainfall occur because of the, when there is 100% humidity, all that, we can talk about that. When I'm talking about as a math teacher, I can draw uh, bar graphs, histograms, I can uh, do a comparison study between Delhi and Sikkim, for example, 
uh, what is the rainfall here, what is the snowfall there, what is the temperature, all that can be done through statistical data. Uh, if I'm an English teacher, I can say, okay, this is the topic of climate. And uh, can you write a story or a poem based on your experience of, uh, you know, a cold day or a rainy day, something like that. Same with Hindi. Any language is always easy to integrate with any topic because they just need to write a poem or an article or that. Social science, the climatic, uh, the topography, the kind of soil that exists, uh, the in different months, what happens, all that comes. So if we can uh, integrate uh, any topic, any topic, uh, whether it is social science, maths, or whatever, uh, in, in any topic that you take. So that should be the, the focus of the uh, classes from one to take. Take up one topic and try to integrate everything. So that's the multidisciplinary nature uh, that we talk about. So then uh, going further, uh, that is uh, encourage cooperative learning. That means make small groups because some people, uh, it's important that we, you know, no man is an island. We we'll need to learn how to cooperate and how to work with others. Many, many good uh, students of our class are toppers in the class, but when they are going to companies, they don't. They are not successful. Why? Because as team members, they're not good. As team members, they're not good. They are, he doesn't cooperate. He doesn't know how social skills. Uh, soft skills are ignored in schools, right? So uh, this is important. So somebody is asking how to use accountancy and business studies. Uh, the art integration that multidisciplinary nature is only up to class eight, right? So only up to class eight is multidisciplinary. Otherwise, up from ninth and tenth, we are doing individual subjects. So I'm talking about multidisciplinary approach only for classes one to eight. Okay, I hope that uh, is there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is another uh, great area that is tangrams and origami uh, can be used in your uh, subjects. It, it is, uh, you know, just by paper folding. And I'm sharing uh, some of the things that uh, one of our trainers from our uh, resource team, uh, Ma'am Kalyani, had done in one of the schools. So this is uh, something which you can uh, see. Uh, this is the work that her students have done in the class, and she was kind enough to share this. So this is, see, the amazing stuff that children are actually doing, right? And this promotes critical thinking. This promotes uh, imagination. And, uh, you know, these students only become students like Ankan Mitra, who become world famous architects and origamists. Look at this guy who, uh, and believe me, these are not instructed. On it. Only the basics were given and uh, he has created a robo. The robo is standing, the robo is sitting down and amazing structures can be made with tangrams, right? Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the creative thinking that we can promote through various activities. Uh, this is again examples of look at that. So probably on Ganesh Chaturthi or something, you know, they were making uh, this. Uh, this is all paper folding. This is not cut and paste. It's the same paper being uh, folded over and over again to create uh, all this. So these are all examples of uh, origami. So look at that. That could be a primary work, you know, the house, trees, everything cut from old newspapers, probably old magazines. Nothing is bought. Okay, that's a cat there, uh, boat being, you know, boat and plane we all used to make. Now, beyond that, uh, we were not uh, uh, progressing, right? So these are all done by Kalyani ma'am with her students. These are all, again, examples of that. Uh, introduce STEM projects. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, integrate real world problems. That means, what is a STEM project? You identify, the child should be identifying a problem. Okay, what is the problem that uh, is having uh, in your school? So some student may say, sir, uh, after the break, there is a lot of uh, food that is thrown all around. So then you make a group. Okay. So as per the SDG, that the sustainable development goals, uh, we have to uh, give a project, uh, you know, reducing that waste and making it into something useful. So the sweeper cleans it, throws in the dustbin and that's it. Now, if you make a project out of it, a STEM project, okay, this is there. Create an awareness that you should not uh, waste food. And by chance, let's say if, it, uh, if uh, it's uh, fallen down, and what is the next step? You make a, a pit where the biodegradable waste can be put and the non-biodegradable is separated into another bin. And then you make probably, uh, you know, the uh, what is that, biomass or, or a biogas out of it. And then you can use it as a fertilizer for the school plants and so on. So these are things which can you can think. That's, that's the uh, uh, importance of a STEM project. And uh, I think gradually with the NEP being implemented, we need to do all this. Building blocks, this is one meter dash. This is all uh, based on our imagination. Okay, you ask students, 
to build a one meter block. You know, those blocks are there, building blocks. You ask them to pile it one over the other. And uh, this is a game of estimation. The problem with our students now is they don't know how to estimate things. You ask them, what is the height of this room? They will give you vague answers. This is 20 centimeter or 20 feet. Realistic uh, imagination is there with very few students. They don't know the exact, okay, you give them a stuff. Okay, can you tell me what is the weight of this? They will give you vague answers, 2 kg, 3 kg, when it may be 800 grams. The estimation power has to be increased uh, by using activity. So estimation of volume, how much water is there in this glass? These are very important for uh, application in real life. How much of land do you think, or what is the length of this road that you see in front? Give them a lot of examples. This is again, see a beautiful example of a child who has done uh, with homemade stuff, the life cycle of a butterfly. Isn't it beautiful? Taken up orange, uh, this thing, the, <laughs> the uh, or then uh, that, uh, what is that? Uh, or, uh, the caterpillar is made from the beans and so on. So pupa, life cycle of a butter cycle, uh, cycle a butterfly is shown so beautifully here. Uh, with the help of simple available things. And uh, this is uh, uh, the beauty of this. And uh, when we do this, uh, nothing is wasting because this actually uh, is for the project. And then you you probably click a picture or something like that. You And then what happens is that uh, you can, these are all edible stuff. You can eat it. Okay, you don't have to preserve it. It will rot. So uh, if somebody is thinking that we are wasting food of this, it's not like that, please. It's 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 all going to be consumed after the project. Only for records we are showing. This is an example of some maths projects which were submitted. Look at that. It's a you know maths is considered a very boring topic, but see on the left side they have drawn a linear equation graph, and on that linear equation they have drawn a picture uh, with a, a attire of a student. Now, if you're doing art integration, that attire could be of the local state. So that student could be wearing a dhoti or a sari or uh, you know, whatever is that, uh, 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 the traditional dress, and you can integrate it beautifully there. On the right side, we call it the square root spiral. Okay, the square root spiral is there. And uh, that square root spiral is also can be integrated. You will find lots of stuff uh, like this uh, done by different students last year. This is again, uh, integration, I'm uh, showing this, this is Delhi Sikkim. They introduced a lot of Sikkim last year. So this, this is the work done by students here, uh, where Sikkim art was put. And this is actually a derivation of the Pythagoras theorem on the left that you see. The sum of the, uh, the base square plus perpendicular square is hypotenuse square. And on the right side, you find that area of circle is pi r square. So they have integrated art into this and made this more meaningful. Here you will find this is the soil profile you see. Uh, such beautifully the student did, uh, the, you know, as you go deep, you will find the big rocks. So they have taken badam or something like that. And then the different... Soil profile is shown by different, different stuff available uh, at home. And you're on the right side, again, beautiful, uh, showing the inner parts of the body through uh, different, different methods, whatever is available, right? So uh, these are just examples I want to show that uh, so that you can also have get some ideas on how to do it. See, uh, you have seen about this biscuit, you know, this biscuit is, what is that biscuit called? I mean, this had a... Uh, a name, this biscuit was, what is that? That Britannia, no? <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, this biscuit's name? Anyone remembers what is this biscuit? <laughs> this is a biscuit available in the market by a particular brand which has all these lines. Ah, yeah, yeah, good day. Thank you, thank you. I was just forgetting that name. Good day, biscuit. Yes, yes. Thank you for the reminder. Good day, biscuit. And this good day, biscuit, see how beautifully the child has thought about good day, biscuit in studying geography, equator, tropic of cancer, <laughs> you have the North Pole, South Pole. So this good day biscuit made good use of and probably after that he can eat it also. So good day to all and this uh, <laughs> great way of doing this. On the right side, again, you will find that uh, match project where the student has integrated uh, Sikkim into the A plus B whole square and uh, getting that. Uh, so these are all, again, examples, practically showing you what children are. These are again small kids from one of the schools in Delhi shared by uh, a teacher. Uh, again, lifestyle of butterfly. You see on the right side, the child is uh, showing a house again that has done, been done by paper folding. What are the important things that you need to live? Okay, there is sun, there is air, water in the form of a beautiful picture and in the form of paper folding, the child has expressed. By seeing that, a visual learner will understand, okay, for to live, uh, uh, what does a human being need? I need, I need food. I need a shelter, I need water, I need air, I need sun. So instead of just telling that in five lines, you need air, water, and the child memorizing, 
a class one child when the child draws or does this is going to be more more meaningful for the child yeah so these are all art projects yeah absolutely right you are right so this is the art projects i am showing so uh, art integrated learning is uh, what you are giving them as a resource for this right so when i am talking about art integrated projects this is what children have done now when it is art integrated learning is how you introduce so the introduction part how you are giving so that if i am taking a session uh, let's say through ppt that is an art integrated learning if i am showing you some 3d models that is art integrated learning if i am uh, in uh, having a discussion with you i'll have a q and a i will have a discussion with you and then we uh, conclude on something okay i am not teaching you something but i am giving you some concepts and then we come on a common conclusion that is art integrated learning i am using some music okay we use a lot of music i don't know whether you use but uh, so there are a lot of songs available on youtube which helps in uh, mnemonics they are called no? which helps in memorization of stuff so that is art integrated learning so uh, there are lots and lots of stuff i mean this is a one hour webinar i mean <laughs> this can go on for hours i'm just giving you examples of uh, the actual stuff so this is uh, again this biscuit is uh, what is that oreo biscuit which has got that cream inside and uh, see the beautiful way in which this child of class 5 has presented the faces of the moon uh, just by you know cutting different parts of the biscuit and uh, so these are all ideas uh which can be uh, so it leave it to the don't give this as an example to the students please these are all uh, self generated stuff by the student so on this note i want to thank you and if there are any questions i will be more than happy to uh, share that so harsha you can take over yes sir so i'll just uh, enable the audio also for teachers so that they can unmute one minute Now I can see Pooja, ma'am. Thank you for coming. Oh. <laughs> hi, hi, Pooja, ma'am. <laughs> Hanji, if there are any questions, if I, I'll be ready. Uh, although I had promised forty-five to a hour, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so, try to finish uh, as fast as possible. I would Because like a topic like this. A topic like this, we speak for two hours, three hours. It's a huge session, right? So I try to give the gist of. Uh, stuff that is really required through practical examples definitely so uh, so i have one question i think on behalf of all the you know educators so do you think that educators need any prior training and experience themselves before conducting such kind of classes with students and what is your experience with ail till now as an educator <coughs> yeah so uh, i think uh, with experience we learn to give out information better so when we are trying out something first time we could fail and actually when we are doing something in class it's always better to do something which you have tried and tested it is better because lack of time because because you know the old systems it's not any time anywhere learning we have to complete a certain task in probably 10 days 20 days so uh, when we talk about that it's always better to get some training now if i'm trained i will always have uh, ideas and things to you know proceed with my class but if i am not a trained uh, teacher i don't attend webinars i don't attend workshops then i have no clue i will be following the same traditional method and when wo kehte hai na principal ka danda aata hai then only they will start doing their work so you know when there is a forced work and uh, when cbsc sends a notification now all the schools are supposed to upload then everybody is a panic so what is happening is that when we are forced to do things that's a different thing altogether but when we are doing it out of joy and when we it's becoming part of our system that's another thing so if you want uh, this all this to be part of your system i think you should get trained that's absolutely true sir i think mr gyan prakash was raising his hand for some question yeah, sir if you uh, have any question you can post in the chat box you can unmute yourself also uh, sir good afternoon myself mr mahapatra from uh, gangeti public school raul gila uh good afternoon to you sir and good afternoon to harsha madam is a really a wonderful session so really i want to know sir within this uh, 40 minutes of classroom can a teacher integrate art for the children sir and uh, during this pandemic situation uh, hardly the teachers are getting the periods to come up the syllabus only but uh, yeah. as per the cbse has been instructed to go for the ail so how far it is practically possible sir to continue the yeah. things in a classroom please sir uh, yeah, may be helped out 
Yeah, so that's what I said, sir. So every class we need not integrate it with AIL. Only the introductory class, like for example, if you are having ten chapters. Sir, as as you saw that all the things are is really good. It is really hmm. children to learn uh, the teaching learning process to make a successful one. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So all classes of your uh, may not be integrated with that. Maybe yes, a few sir, classes. Sir, no problem. Yeah, yeah, a few classes is enough. I think uh, when you are introducing a certain uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Sir, I'm not clear because the net problem is there. So, uh, so Arsha, ma'am, please communicate this. Whatever I have said, the you know, the recording sure, will be available. <laughs> you can send, uh, sir. Personally, you will get the recording. Don't worry. <laughs> I think listening to your session, each and everyone has gone crazy. All the teachers are just looking forward. Yeah, that's that's what the idea is to make people yeah. crazy. That's what we we are. <laughs> Kahi na kahi, you know the the educators. What has happened is that you know uh, many of us are creative and we are, but वो सब दब गया है. All the thing is inside. We just need to have somebody put in the chat. ये सब तो सदियों से, you know, it has been there in the system, but we don't use it. That is the problem. Uh, sir, you are on mute. Can you uh, unmute yourself? Yes. Yeah, the host has muted me also. Thank you. <laughs> so, Deepika, may I ask a question? I can public school. Yeah, ma'am, you can post your question in the chat box. Actually, whenever. Ah, okay, that's also okay. All the people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the echo is creating a problem. So. Yeah. So. so can uh, we have few activities for English too? yeah so english activity so i am not an english person as such so english activities if you do a subject wise thing i am sure that just if you are doing a multidisciplinary approach for the thing as i told you it could be in the form of poem it could be in the form of stories it could be writing of experiences it could be a playing of a character from your story right you could have a role play you could have a dialogue uh, you could have your class enact out that play instead of reading so you can assign different different parts these are all suggestions uh, when you want to do uh, subject wise like in class 9 10 we are doing subject wise so that uh, you can use your creativity on how that uh, uh, you know like i remember one of our teachers doing this uh, uh, shakespeare play uh, i don't know which was the in the syllabus um, uh, that was um, uh, uh, the, the shakespeare i think it's in class 10 so what is going to happen is that uh, the when the enactment takes place it's understood better so uh, uh, i think uh, different formats you will have to decide on your own i am not uh, i am a maths teacher so i will not be able to tell you what what you can do in english but you can always use your imagination and creativity and uh, you know what works best in your situation also you have to identify because you know you could be in from a rural setup you could be an urban setup you you may have wifi you may not have wifi your children may not be uh, having so uh, things so i will not be able to general guidelines i can say role plays mimicry song dance poem creative writing all this can be introduced uh, the cbse has already given all these documents i'm sure you are uh, gone through that all right so i think uh, we have already taken a lot of sir's time and <laughs> we'll share the recording across and we'll definitely try to call sir once again for some more you know wonderful sessions ahead and i would just like to present a small vote of thanks to sir before we bid him farewell So I really deem it a great honor and privilege to present the vote of thanks for such an enlightening session we all had today, and to all the teachers and educators who are asking questions, don't worry, we'll definitely make sure Sir comes, you know, with us once again for some more sessions. So on behalf of the homework app team and myself, I would like to extend a warm gratitude to you, Sir, that you took time out of your busy schedule and you just presented us with this immense plethora of knowledge, you know, in the field of education and art and precisely of the CBC background, how we can. focus on a holistic development of the students so warm regards to you sir and thank you so so much for the session yeah yeah thank you thank you so much and <laughs> yeah and i also I uh, request all, all the participants to please stay in the meeting so that you can share the feedback form for the certificate yeah thank you thank you so much so i'll take your leave thanks yes yeah, yeah. thank you thank you sir All right. So as we know that you know we from the homework car wanted to present the session to all educators here today. You know for some knowledge, fun, you know, and and a very very um, you know knowledge loaded Sunday. So obviously, where do we stand for, and who are we? Many of you already you know that the our teachers, you know, and usage, and we are right now trusted by more than five lakh teachers in ten thousand schools across India, and we are looking forward to some more relationships as well. 
Now we have around seven lakh pre-typed questions available with us in the both MCQ and the subjective format in our application, the homework app. And also we give teachers the flexibility to type out their own questions, right? And that's just wow. We can help you generate your own questions. As Sir said right now, that education is not just only about going by the theoretical aspect, right? You have to be practical enough. And more than the hard work, I think right now, everybody focuses more on the smart work. And our app actually helps us to do that. And that is the one reason why Sir actually connected with us and presented this beautiful webinar today, because he really felt that Homework app is also one of the application which is contributing to the AIL in some way or the other. And we can help you generate this in just 30 seconds. Quiz, questionnaire, practice test sets, homework, question paper, et cetera, right? Obviously, you have the facility to set deadlines, monitor in-app submissions, to, you know, make flexibility or give flexibility to the students from your end. That is also there from our side. You have the option to generate your own questions, okay, as well. As a teacher, if you enter some questions from your end, we make sure that your knowledge is also shared with the other teachers okay, across India. And yes, obviously there's more. This is not just it. Okay, we have the auto correction facility where the teachers don't have to correct anything from their end. We also have the auto student auto performance report generation feature wherein you don't have to manually prepare a report card, but you have, you know, but the app will do that for you, right? So you can also monitor your students' performance, okay, in with the help of the in-app submissions. Um, and let us surprise you, obviously. So are you ready for this? Now, what is it that students don't need to download the application as well? So quiz, homework, question paper, et cetera, all can be accessed via a simple link and which can be shared anywhere. Google Classroom, Zoom, Google Meet, WhatsApp, et cetera. And it's just wow, right? You don't have to download the application at all. It's just the teachers who will download the application, make the homework, question, quiz, questionnaire, whatever you want from the seven lakh pre type questions and give it to the students out there. So yes, if there are anything else we can help you with, you can take the screenshot of this particular slide. You can contact the senior executive, Mr. Sahil Mohammed. There is an email ID given. And we are also present on other social media platforms as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining the session for today.